Okay, strap yourself in. This is a Talk Birdie to Me bonus episode with David Michaluzzi. Yep, they got him. Yeah. Now, live from the Australian Golf Centre, home of the PGA of Australia and Golf Australia, here's Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. I hope he remembers. Hello. Hey, Dave. <laughs> As you can tell, we've got Mark and Dan and myself here. We're just... Uh... <laughs> He's pissing himself already. I love it. I, did, I shouldn't have expected anything else, really, should we? No. That's, that's David Michalusi. Mika. As promised and promised... And promised, <laughs> and promised, we and did, promised. We did try hard. We tried our bums off, Nick. We really did. Text messages. We had to get Golf Australia involved. We have moved heaven and earth. <laughs> but my goodness, we've got him. David Michaluzzi, the 2022-23 Order of Merit Australasian winner, has joined us on Talk Birdie to Me. G'day, Mick. How are we doing? I'm Going pretty well. Nice to speak. It really is. How are you feeling? Did, did you, did, you know, we've got you not long after the final round at the National where you played incredible, 64 is a joke. But did you celebrate then or did you celebrate the win when you actually won the Order of Merit a couple of weeks ago? We actually haven't really celebrated at all. Given kind of been, it's been really weird. I, um, so my parents up for the New South Wales Open and they had to drive back Sunday night. Mm. So we only had like a, like a real quick dinner and I had to go back. And then last night, I was kind of a celebration, but also more more chilling out. Uh, we went back to uh, my girlfriend's parents' place and uh, just had just had some pizza and just just chilled out. But nothing really, nothing really major. Like I don't, I'm not a real big drinker, so I didn't didn't go out into town or or do any of that. So there hasn't been anything. Uh, Exciting. Sorry, I, I wish I had a cooler story. No, that's okay. That, that surprises that's, me, you know, because yeah. your, your general demeanour, I, I had you pegged for somebody who would have pinned the ears back and would have let rip. <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, probably. No, he's, he's learned his lessons, you see. He's, uh, you know, it's, he's, a, he's a professional golfer now. Clever. And there are standards and, and things that you have to do. If you want a long career, trust me, Mark, I know these things. Yes, good. <laughs> how, how long was your career? <laughs> not, not as long as no, yours. <laughs> uh, I went there, didn't I? I shouldn't have gone there. <laughs> That's anyway, okay. Uh, Mick, it, it's great to chat, mate. Um, you, you did a little piece throughout the year I saw, uh, I think maybe for – might have been at the W Open where you know you're obviously a car lover and and uh, yep. and splurging. You were going to sort of maybe get the car wrapped, do some new rims and all that thing. Is that still on the cards? Is that the sort of thing that you're going to reward yourself with after such a fantastic season? No, I instead I got a new car. <laughs> <laughs> got a new car. <laughs> so I, after I was the Open, yeah, I bought a, um, a HSV Club Sport just as a as a reward for myself. To myself, I haven't really bought myself anything. Really nice in the last, oh, you know, probably forever. I kind of have a shoe collection as well, so I've bought some nice pairs of shoes over a certain period of time, depending on how well I play. Just as a little treat, it just like shows like if obviously if I spend the money, I've got to make it back somehow. So it keeps me on top of working hard and all that. And so I, yeah, the, the the other car is uh, is more for mum and dad now. They both got work vans, so it's a bit. A bit hard trying to go to go to the shops or go anywhere in their van, so they can just take take my old girl and um and yeah. But uh, she's uh, both of them are still here. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, now you got to look <laughs> after the folks. That's for sure. I think you should still get it wrapped and trimmed for them anyway. That'd be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd that be good. good. But it's funny, yeah. you know, when I was playing, one of the incentives I gave myself when I was playing, whenever I had a top ten, my wife said, "Look, you need to reward yourself because." So often in this game, we don't win, obviously. Mm. You know, if, if you come second or third, then you, you you don't feel like you've lost, but you haven't won that week. So there's a bit of a letdown. So she said, look, reward yourself with a, a dozen of nice bottles of wine. And that's funnily enough how I got into, into wine and collecting right. and that. So I love that idea of the shoes and, and you sort of doing something special for yourself because you need to do that. You need to reward yourself uh, as you're going along. One, one of the other things I wanted to, to I guess, ask you, I mean, you, you've been coached by Marty Joyce, correct? Yeah, yep. and then you also did some work with a short game coach, uh, Andrew Cooper. Can you tell us a little about that? Because I'm always fascinated with the short game because at the professional level, 
I mean, we all know you guys can hit the ball, but it's that 100 yards and in, I think, which makes the real difference. Yeah, 100%. So I've known Andrew for probably more than half of my life. I've, I've actually known him since I was about 12, 13 years old. Um, he was a pretty good golfer himself. I think, I don't know if he played many tour events, but he was, he was a pro and he, put, he, tried, he tried out, but um, he's now into coaching and he became one of the coaches at Cranbourne and I've, I've, I've known him for, forever. And yeah, so we, we just talk a lot about short game. He always wanted to be a short game coach. He just loves short game. He doesn't really like the, the whole uh, swing theory and all that. Like he's got his own theories, but he loves short game. Mm. So we chat and the chipping ground at Cranbourne is literally just outside the pro shop. And um, we would always just talk about different shots and how to play different shots and all that. And um, so we were talking about, obviously I was, I was practicing a lot of these, a lot of these shots and some of the shots are, they're very old school. So you can see like, so I'll look at like Seve, Ernie Els, Tiger, like early days where they didn't really want to put spin on the ball. They're always more flight, land, like land angle. How much, or how they want the ball to actually release on the greens to obviously hold chips, get chips close, and all that. And so we started. I started playing around with that, and um, I played unbelievable. I played unbelievable back in. I think it was the start of 2018. I I won the Vic Am like nine and eight. I won the Master Am by five shots three weeks after that, and played really well at Aussie Am and. There's a something in this, and it took me it took me about maybe four years to realise. Oh, maybe I should actually employ this guy. Like, <laughs> and <laughs> so I reached out. I, I was I played pretty. I played solid last season, but I knew there was just something missing. My my ball striking was great. I was playing. I, I was hitting it that good that the 67, 66 were happening, but the bad rounds were always a couple over, maybe three, four over. That threw me out of contention. I had a, I had quite a few top tens, but it never really got. I never really had the chance to actually win tournaments, and it was because of that. So I thought, well, I'll, have, I'll dive deeper into this, and it was just the, it was just it was more short game and, and score like and more about scoring. So I was like, okay, I'll I'll reach out to Andrew just just to see because I've always liked his his theories of of short game and. And how he how he sees it, and so we started working. It was actually just before the Nash tournament last year, so it would have been probably about a year ago. I went down there, and we we just hit a few chip shots, and he just goes, "Holy crap! Like, how are you this good? And your short game is this bad?" <laughs> like yeah. there was a lot, and there was a lot of work to do. Like, and I and I love that from, from and that's what I like, obviously I still see him, but the feedback when something isn't right to say, no, nah, that was shit. Do, like, do that again and, like, really actually focus on the task at hand. Mm. And there's, there's a bit of technique involved, but it's more actually looking around the greens, obviously the lie and all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it just opened a, a, a different door to seeing how or what I can do inside of 50, 60 metres. We worked pretty hard over from April till uh, September. I had Dunhill played all right there and then, had my first win and swept straight up. I just knew from there. I was just like, okay, now I've got a team behind me. That's this could be unbelievable if we can keep this team and, and keep going for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, we could potentially do a lot, of, a lot of damage. So, like yesterday, I played, I played quite solid, but it wasn't. It like I was eight under through eleven, but nothing was like I wasn't. I hold a thirty footer and a twenty footer, but everything else was just. Easy, but like easy birdies. They'll pitch shots from sixty to eighty meters. That looking at where I'm actually going to finish the ball, rather than rather than the, like how I'm going to swing it and do all that kind of stuff. Like I'm thinking around the hole, and oh yeah, I was eight under through eleven. And I only felt like I was about three or four under. So having having him, just I think it's propelled me to an, to another level, which has been which has been great. And the and the, and the team with Marty, I think with Marty for. For such a long time, he knows my game probably better than anybody, even probably better than myself. I think we've got a we've got a great team, and we can't wait to do some damage. Uh, I love what I'm hearing there, Dave. I mean, so many times you you get to watch a kid chip around a chipping green. They're trying their focus is on spin, you know. And, yeah. and what you said there early about 
that's just not part of your plan. It's about getting the ball close and, and, and just finding a way to do it. I know your head's on straight. Tell, tell me this, because I always hear, and I always heard too back in the day, when, when, when you get to the point where your short game is sharp, and not sharp around the practice putting green, but sharp mm. everywhere you go, tournaments, the whole lot. It, it, these good players that I used to knock around with, it took pressure off their long game because they were so sharp. Have you experienced yep. this feeling as well? 100%. You can go and walk in. Yeah, it takes take a lot of pressure off. I think I'm hitting it really good at the moment, which is uh, it's making things a lot easier. But when I'm under pressure, I feel like my short game under pressure is better than my long game. Mm. Just from the work that I've, I've done over the last year. And it also it can come down to course management as well, but it definitely does help when... The short game is sharp. It, it also depends on conditions around the different courses and all that. If I'm feeling comfortable, if I'm not. If I'm not feeling comfortable, I'm hitting more center of greens. I'm trying to hit a lot of greens to, to not have those soft bogeys happen. But if it's a course, say, around Victoria. Victoria is probably a, a pretty good example. I played pretty well there at Aussie Open. And the conditions are very similar to what I grew up on and even play at, at Peninsula. I could go far, far at pins, and I think that's one of the reasons why I, sh- I shot very low that first day was I could attack pins that not many people would actually really look at. And knowing that if it does go, if it does go bad, then I've got the short game to then also get it up and down. Also, I do my uh, short game stuff with Andrew at Victoria. So that also helped too. Oh, I love it. And th- there was a pretty handy player back in the day who had a very similar philosophy. His name was Tom Watson. He, yeah, he did all right. <laughs> he he did pretty well, very aggressive, because he, his his short game was insanely good. Yeah. Okay, we're talking to David Bicaluzzi. He's uh, told us that he wants to be in the top ten of the DP World Tour. We're going to ask him that next on Talk Birdie Timmy. You're listening to the Talk Birdie Timmy podcast with Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. If you're enjoying the pod, share it with a friend and help spread the word. So you had three wins this season, uh, WAPGA, uh, TPS Sydney, where, I mean, wow, well, what a finish there, 61 final round, yep. and then the New South Wales Open. But, I mean, I think the first win's always the toughest, uh, just getting over the line that first time. I think you played uh, in Kalgoorlie, WAPGA, the final round with Jared Felton, if I can recall yep. correctly. But, yep. I mean, going into those last few holes, did you sort of know where you sat and, and, and – did you really have a, a conscious thing of, right, I'm going to win this or just sort of see what happens? Because everyone's mindset is different in this regard. And I think watching you as the season's progressed, it's just incredible to see how confident you are, especially in those mm. final rounds. You've basically become the final round guru. It's just amazing to watch. <laughs> hey, that WA PGA, the, the par that 14th hole, which is playing probably one of the toughest of the week. And then we get on to 15, it was slightly downwind out of the right. And I've laid up the whole week to about an eight on or a nine on. And for some reason, I'm like, yep, it's just two on. But my hand grabbed driver. <laughs> and just thought to myself, nah, you're going you're gonna to win this. Like, man up. And from that, from that moment, it was just like, like, chest got wider. And it was kind of like a watch this. I'm going to do this. Yeah, nice. And there it is. There's I the moment. Like, yeah, yeah, real nice. It is, hit this like low punt, like hunting draw and uh, Jared hit a good one after me. But then I registered up to six feet, made it, did the exact same, he, 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 he hit the exact same tee shot on the neck where I laid up the whole week. And I kind of got lucky where I was, but the shot I hit and, and everyone around that tee Saw where the drive actually went. It took the slope and actually fed into that into that lie, which I kind of got very lucky with. But the drive was so pure that felt needed to he needed to do something, and, and he and he hooked it, hit the fence, and it came back in. But yeah, it was just one of those moments where it was just like you got to stack up and actually win this. Like like people aren't going to fold around you. You've actually got to go out and earn it. Nice to hear what's going on in that head of yours. I mean, you've explained it very, very well. That, look, that's looking back. I just want to look forward for a second, David. Yeah. Um, I heard what you said. That they, they did this little piece uh, on the broadcast, and you said you wanted to finish in the top ten on the DP 
world tour, and and I, we we both think he can, mate. We were nodding along, mm. believing when you were saying that. We, we Nick and I were nodding our heads. Um, when do you actually start? Where, is it is it after the season that's currently on, or were you sneaking on a couple before the uh, race to Dubai finale? Um, so the the cards start. Uh, in I think it's Aussie Open or Aussie PJ November. And so the plan is I paid my affiliation fee with the DP tour for this year. So the Aussie Open and Aussie PJ that I played has got me into a half decent position where I can go over and potentially improve my category that I've got for next year. Um, so the plan is to hopefully play Italian Open in a month's time, I think it is. I think it's the start of May. Um, but that's not – obviously, it's not locked in stone just yet. But um, hopefully there's a few opportunities before the Open. Uh, I like to hope so. But if not, I will go over and prepare for, for the Open. I don't know how long beforehand. But, yeah, just hoping that there is there is a couple of tournaments because I just, I just want to keep playing. I'm playing, playing pretty good at the moment. Not going to lie, it's, it's probably the best it's ever felt. I definitely think I can get a lot better. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what it's like playing against the guys that I usually watch on Thursday and Friday night and Saturday and Sunday nights. And also guys that I played amateur golf with too. To see, and like, am I am I still a little bit behind? What, what else do I need to work on? Or is it that, I go on and potentially just kick their asses straight away. <laughs> um, we, we, we just don't know. So I'm, I'm real eager to see that, uh, to, to see what happens with that. I'm really, really keen to see the Open. Um, it's really, in the last probably, say, week or so, I think it's really starting to sink in. Like, I've already just booked a place. I've got... Uh, most of the, ticket, the tickets organised. The like family's coming, a few friends are coming. Bringing Marty over, trying to organise that. Got a caddy for that week as well, and he's been there. He's been around Liverpool Heat, and yeah, now it's just like oh, I want to see if like if I can compete with these guys because obviously it's going to be it's going to be daunting, and you know what it's like, Nick, playing your first major. It's, it, it can be very scary, but I'm also I'm just so excited to just just to tee it up and. Potentially show how show these guys how how good, or not not just me, but how good the players here in Oz are. Because mm. I think we've got so much talent here, and like what um what we've said all year, the PGA have done such a good job with opening up these pathways for us. So it's not not just the three uh, the three cars; it's more the the Q schools and and all that. The Dun- the Dunhill we get, I think we get ten spots into as well. So having so many events and I think there's going to be more events next year that there's going to be so many guys I think coming out of Australia in the next five to ten years that are just going to I think going to dominate the world really. Yeah we've got a lot of talent down here uh, as you say and well you're leading the way at the moment on, on our local tournament scene it's great to see so many events down here now but you know the world is at your feet which is great you got a lot of golf ahead of you which is awesome as well and uh i'll get my old caddy wilbur to maybe look into some uh, contacts over there see if uh, if uh, if you need a caddy because we've noticed you're pushing your buggy around in these events but you got a caddy for the <laughs> open that's awesome but um there are some good guys over there a lot of good aussie caddies too but uh yeah mate, but- it's uh yeah, it's been great talking with you and uh good luck, sort of good luck for the, the rest of this year and then next year as well playing uh Playing all those events on the DP World Tour. Fantastic stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. So that was David Bicaluzzi, our 22-23 Order of Merit of Australasia winner. And great to have a word with him, Nick. And we said it to him, but honestly, he's he, you're right. The world is at this kid's feet. And let's hope he gets off to a good start. From the Australian Golf Centre, home of the PGA of Australia and Golf Australia, this has been a bonus episode of Talk Birdie to Me with Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. Talk Birdie to Me's executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. Sound designed by Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com.